Hi, my name is Brian Smith. In this video, I'll be covering how to install Red Hat Enterprise Linux Live Kernel patches using Red Hat Satellite. Before watching this video, first watch my previous RHEL Live Kernel patching video where I cover the basics. Also review the RHEL documentation on this topic to understand the limitations of Live Kernel patching. In this example, I'm using Satellite version 6.6. .6. To start, we need to identify which kernels are present on our satellite clients. To do this, we can go to the Monitor menu and select Facts, and then filter for uname colon colon release. This will show a list of our clients as well as their kernel version. If we click over on the view chart button over on the right for one of these entries we can see the distribution of kernel versions. You can see that we have one server running a 2.6.32-696.el6 kernel. The EL6 indicates a RHEL6 server and RHEL6 is not capable of live kernel patching. We still have a couple of servers running kernel 3.10.0-162.el7, and the EL7 indicates Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. And in fact, these are RHEL 7.7 systems, and they do support live kernel patching. The other two listed here, the kernel 4.18.0-147.el8, are servers running Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, and in fact, these are RHEL 8.1 servers that are capable of live kernel patching, and these are the ones that we'll be working with today. So let's go back to the previous screen here, and what we're going to do is copy that kernel version we want to work with into the clipboard. Next we'll go to Host and All Hosts, and what we're going to do here is filter for facts.uname colon colon release equals, and then we're going to paste in that kernel version and go ahead and click on Search. And then we're going to hit the little drop down for the bookmark menu and click Bookmark This Search. We'll name the bookmark host with kernel and then we'll paste in that kernel version and then we'll go ahead and click submit. Throughout the rest of the process we'll utilize this search bookmark so that we can work with only the host running this specific kernel version. Next we'll go to the content menu and select packages and then we'll filter for kpatch-patch. This will show a list of all the kpatch packages that are available in the satellite environment. Let's take a look at the naming convention for the packages for the live kernel patches. They start with kpatch-patch, -patch, followed by the kernel version with periods replaced by underscores, and then followed by the kpatch level, and then finally the last part is the rel version and architecture. This image here shows that for each version of the kernel there's a stream of live kernel patch updates. They start with the kpatch level 0-0, -0, which is an initial kpatch that doesn't actually contain any live kernel updates. However, it does allow you to subscribe the system to future updates in that kernel's live patching stream. Any of the kpatch levels after 0-0 are actual kpatches that contain live kernel patches. So for example, if we look at the top line for kernel 3.10.0-1062, you can see that there are multiple kpatch levels available. These are cumulative, so for example, the 1-5 update would include all the updates from 1-2 and 1-1. In our specific example, we're on kernel 4.18.0-147, and the latest kpatch level for this is 1-3. Now that we understand how the naming convention works for the kpatches, we can find the one that we need in the list here. So in this example, we want kpatch-patch-4-18-0-147, which is the kernel version, and then dash 1-3, which is the kpatch level. We'll go ahead and copy that version into our clipboard so we can use it later on. At this point you'd also want to verify that this package is present in the content views and lifecycle environments for the servers that will be patched, and you'd want to publish or promote the content view if needed. At this point we'll go ahead and go to the monitor menu and select jobs, and then we'll click the blue run job up in the upper right corner of the screen. We'll change the job category to Ansible Packages, and then we will select the previously created search bookmark that has our kernel version as a search query. Next to Resolves 2, we'll click the Refresh button, and then we'll click the Preview button. This will show the host that will be affected by this job that we're about to run. For State, we'll leave it on Present, and for Name, we'll paste in the package name for the kpatch file that we want to install. Once we have this all done, we'll go ahead and click on Submit, which will run the job that will go out and install this kpatch on the two hosts that were returned by our search query. This will take about 15 or 20 seconds, so I'll go ahead and speed up the video here until it's completed. 
Okay, as you can see, the job reports that it was successful on both of the hosts. I'm logged into one of those hosts here, and I'm going to go ahead and run kpatch list, and we can verify that it is showing that we have one kpatch loaded and enabled, and it's the same version that we had selected to install, so we can validate that this was successful. If we had a large number of hosts that we wanted to validate that the kpatch was successfully enabled on, what we could do is we could copy the text here and then go back into satellite and click on the monitor menu and then click on jobs and then click on run job. Then we will select our search bookmark again that we've previously created and we will set the command to kpatch list and then we'll pipe to fgrep a single quote and then we'll paste in that text from the host that we checked and then do a closing single quote. We'll go ahead and click submit and what this will do is it'll go out and run this command on each of the hosts and the fgrep command will return successful if that text is there and if for some reason the kpatch was not successfully installed on a host the fgrep will not find that text and it will report a failure. In this example both of the hosts did successfully install the kpatch so they will both come back successful here when we do this fgrep command to validate. Next, we'll go back over to the client and I'll show you how to validate which CVEs were included in the kpatch. If we run rpm minus q minus minus changelog and then we paste in the kpatch package that we've been working with, it will show the changelog for this package including the CVE numbers that were included. Well thanks a lot for watching the video 